And the other thing. But you, you're in a unique position now because there are not many people that started out without a pile of money right. that could support themselves solely through art. A lot of people would like to be able to do that, but you have made this transition into this renowned artist where people, your, your art is sought after and commands a, I mean, a, a fair amount of money. A, a, mm -hmm. And what do you think, what do you attribute that to? Do you think it's the authenticity? authenticity of the work, um, your style, what, what, in your opinion? Well, I, it, it's saying this as, 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 you know, as honestly and objectively as, as I could. Um, obviously, the work has to be of a certain quality for that to be the case. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And I work very hard at making my work of quality, what, whatever the subject matter might be. I think one thing has been fundamental in, in having a degree of success is that subject matter wise I have chosen to do things that uh, were not necessarily things that everybody had always done. Mm -hmm. Much of the scenery that I choose is things that had not been delved into before. Much of the subject matter of K-Ban has been used, you know, quite, quite frequently and it's very iconic and so forth and it's wonderful stuff and fishing boats at the dark and all that stuff. Yeah. But for some reason, other things tended to kind of pique your interest and in pique my interest. And so these were the things as I go around the city that I that I would see, and I would I would I do things aside from whether it would be something that you think this will sell, that won't sell. Tourists buy this, they buy that. I don't try to go there too much with my work. I'd rather have the work come from something that's you know moves me, which ideally everybody would like to do. It's just that uh, I think people seeing a different perspective of the city. I think it, 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 it resonated with a lot of people as being something that was more of a real depiction of the place that they actually live in, as opposed to something that could be more of a romanticized view of, of Gloucester. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take, you know, it's funny that you say that. I'm going to take a, uh, the camera off of you for yeah. one second. I'm gonna, sure. For a, a classic example of, I think, what you're talking about is this picture of our, sh of our shed. Down, you know, this is a shed that's on our property down the dock. And it's just this broken down, rusty old shed. But you capture it and, you know, most people would be turned around away from that, looking at the boats yeah. tied up. Yeah. But you took this, this, you know, you, your perspective is, you know, a beautiful, I have this series on my blog and not to talk about me, but it's called Beautiful Industry. And it's all like fork trucks and fork truck wheels up close. and. And uh, well, now you would, like would really like the painting. I did a painting from the uh, across the street from there. My wife and I's first apartment when we got married was right across the street on the 86 East Main Street. Okay. And it's next to what people call they, some people call it Doll Mountain. Right. Yeah. You know all the Shirley, stuff from the Rock yeah, Shirley's yeah. house. Yep. 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 So they were our neighbors, you know, yep. back then. And I asked her now if I could go up on the top of the rock and paint from up there. And looking down at your wharf with the trucks out there and stuff, and that building, and the guys were working out there on the gill nets or something. Yeah. And uh, man, that was a corker. I don't have a picture of it, but that was a nice painting. Um, so I love, you know, I love that stuff. And I, and I love Gloucester, but I, yes, I, I think I liked it in some ways more when we had more of the antique boats and the antique buildings, and yes, but I like it I like it for what it is. I, 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 there's something that I gravitate towards in terms of this broken down effect and everything. To me, it really speaks about, not the negative side of that, but so many years of, of, of history and one thing built on top of another and things that do break and they do. I was just reading that book by John Morris. You know, there's other periods of time. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's not just now when Gloucester went through periods of demise and yeah. the industry was not doing what they wanted to do. There weren't markets for the fish and everybody was poor and there, there were hardly any boats and all the wolves fell apart and everything else. Well, these are just all of the things that happen over time. If you go to a place like Nantucket and everything is brand new and pristine, and it doesn't speak very much to human endeavor and time and history and character fall and, and, and failure and success and all the things that are part of life. And I and I I, I guess subconsciously when I look around Gloucester I see a lot of these juxtapositions of time and 
and experience and new and old and ugly and pretty and how do I make all this into some kind of picture that, that's not only visually interesting as an artist, I mean I have to function on an artist level really primarily, I'm not a storyteller per se, but, but the story part of painting, the narrative stuff, can, you know, can, can resonate with people more so than, than just something that's pictorial. Where do you, I, this is kind of, I don't know if it's a morbid thing, when you, Go for it. <laughs> you know, I, I, how do you ask this question, I, but I guess, you know, it's, what do you want your legacy to be? When you pass, right, do you foresee, what is, what happens with, the, with all this, like this, well, you try not to. You try not to think. You know what you do as an artist. The best thing for you, for me to focus on is um, you can you can go there in your mind. You know what will people think in retrospect of what I've done and so forth. You know. Well, the best thing to do is think in terms of what you're doing at the moment mm. and make it something that's you know as quality and as meaningful as, as you can. Mm -hmm. And I am fortunate to have the luxury to do that. I understand a lot of artists don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. They're struggling to make things that people will buy because this is what they, they have to, you know, this is what they're doing for a living and so forth. And they don't have other ways. And, and I don't either. This is what I do for a living. This is my entire income. Yeah. It's from my work, my paintings and so forth. So, but at the same time, I've been successful enough so that I, I what I think in terms of is, uh, Doing the best work I can, which involves a lot, which needn't be gone into now. But but that's that's what I focus on. I, I can't think about what will people think about it afterwards, and, because in history of art and in history of and even in modern art, my goodness, modern art today goes from every extreme to the most bizarre and most you know things that people would not consider anything that had anything to do with art. You know, mm -hmm. to to the most traditional and uh, you know all the things that that implies you have to just go your own way and and let the, let the chips let the chips fall where they may in terms of how people evaluate you and what you've done. Yeah. You cannot work thinking what will people think about this. I think that's rather self defeating mm. and does not allow you to just go far and do it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I you know, see it. That's how I look at it. Okay. Let's let's talk. What who were your influences? Well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a funny person, I guess, in that sense, in that I've been influenced by a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff over the years. And when I was younger, in, in school and so forth, uh, you know, I, I, I looked into, I'm kind of a person that looks into things, you know, I looked a lot into different artists, you know, everyone from, when I was in high school, I actually did a lot of sculpture. So I became very familiar with the work of the great sculptors like Rodin and Michelangelo and, so forth. At other times, uh, when I was in school, I was very influenced by the work of people like Vincent van Gogh or uh, some of the great, I think a lot of the great drawers, you know, because I was like drawing. Mm. For me, it was very fundamental to what I do. So people who are great draftsmen or great drawers were always attracted to me, Rembrandt, van Gogh. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know, I look at a lot of people's work. I used to always went to the museums when I was in a museum school. I would go to the museum all the time, look at the work, look at the Rembrandt etchings and all these kinds of things. So, uh, has there been one, is there one person that's really a real influence on what I do? Probably, it, it, it's, a, it's a mixture of things, I think. Without wanting to pin it down, I don't want to pin it down too much. People look at my work and see, Edward Harper, and this often comes up, you know. That was in behind the, that was behind the question. I'm giving you a little, you know, the roundabout answer. But uh, you know, when I when I go out and I do architecture, and I think that's why Harper was attracted to to, to Gloucester because of uh, he probably would have come here anyways, whether it was good architecture or not. But when he got here. He was drawn to the architecture. And we're glad of that. Do you, when, you know when you see other people, like, like someone like Malhaupt, if you've ever heard of this artist, Malhaupt, he's like the father of the Cape Man School, okay? 